big round of applause for Jim Hightower. Thank you very much. Uh, great, great to be here. Danny, the great job uh, you're doing. My friend Janet uh, Keating, Alan Johnson, all of you good folks. It's a joy to be here because I've uh, seen people that I've been reading about and knowing about and the fights that you were making. It's really a joy and I just appreciate you allowing a scruffy Texas populace to come in here and intrude uh, in, into your deliberations uh, here uh, this morning. Uh, of course, uh, Greg mentioned uh, I'm from Texas. Actually, I'm from the former state of Texas. Uh, we're, thanks to our Republican governor, who, who by the way, puts the goober in gubernatorial. <laughs> we, uh, we are now the uh, secessionist republic of Republican ridiculousness, or, or Servistan, as we call it, in Austin. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, just makes me happier than a mosquito at a nudist colony to be standing up here looking out at uh, you savvy and scrappy uh, WVCers who uh, stand up champions of the common good and uh, the uh, common interests and common sense, you corporate butt kickers and grassroots agitators uh, for America's true values of economic justice and environmental stewardship. So it's a joy to, to join you here in sunny uh, Sutton. Uh, as we celebrate 20 years of your uh, activism and achievement. Uh, it, you, you're an organization that not only uh, dares to challenge the, the big shots, uh, the bastards, uh, the bullshitters of big coal, but, uh, but also you're willing to put forth a, a green jobs vision uh, and agenda for Appalachian renewal. Uh, and I, I've written a good bit uh, about uh, uh, mountaintop uh, removal uh, over the years, including uh, in my latest book here, uh, we write it up, but in, in my Hightower Lowdown uh, newsletter that Greg was uh, mentioning, I've uh, done it there, and all my radio commentaries, and in my columns, uh, and etc. And it's, uh, it, it's something I'm sure you've experienced, uh, but I get feedback sometimes from people saying, oh, that, that's just not possible, that can't be happening. Uh, and uh, and I've, I've been challenged, because uh, I, I guess the coal puts out stories across the country that this actually is not happening at all. Uh, and I get people saying, well, that's just not true. Uh, so I'm able to send them to, to some of your uh, DVDs and, uh, of course, your book and this great new uh, uh, book, the uh, coffee table book that you put out. So, you know, I, I know that cynics tell us that it's impossible to do uh, what, what we're trying to do, that uh, it's impossible for ordinary people to win against the corporate profiteers and their political puppets, that grassroots people uh, just uh, are, are not able to take charge of their own destiny, but as a friend of mine who's been a pioneer in the organic movement puts it, uh, those who say it can't be done should not interrupt those who are doing it. <laughs> so I've come uh, these many miles from Absurdistan uh, chiefly to uh, thank you and to urge you just to keep on uh, keeping on. I, I know it's not easy to confront the money deletes uh, to get in the face of power like you're doing. Uh, sometimes you get to feeling like that guy that B.B. King sings about, uh, nobody likes you but your mama and she might be jiving you too. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry gets feeling like that? <laughs> it's not uh, easy but it is essential uh, to have people with the guts and the gumption uh, to stand up, speak out, educate, protest, demonstrate, march, blockade, climb drag lines, get arrested and do whatever else is necessary to stop the desecration and advance our basic values of economic fairness and environmental sustainability. Uh, you know, this, the first job of a citizen is to keep your mouth open. Uh, and we're all pretty good at that. But, but it helps that that mouth is attached to a brain. <laughs> uh, and that is the importance of uh, your environmental uh, council. Uh, through organized work that you are doing. Uh, you provide the information, uh, the training, uh, the vision, the connections, the unity that links that brain power uh, to mouth power, to foot power, and then to political power. Uh, organization is essential. I, I compare groups like this to a little hardware store that's uh, right near my house in uh, south side of Austin, downtown. Uh, and it's, it's a 
place about the size of this room right here. It's not a big box store at all called Harold's Hardware. And it's really a wonderful place. Uh, you, you don't have to buy the whole box of nails. You know, they'll sell you one nail. <laughs> I need a nail here. <laughs> They'll, uh, they'll, they'll work with you. Well, what are you trying to build? Well, I'm working on this lectern here. And, uh, and they'll say, well, let's pencil it out and see what you need. They'll loan you a tool. You can take a tool home and bring it back. And the slogan at Harold's is, together we can do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be our slogan, doesn't it? Because <laughs> we can't do it ourselves. Uh, but uh, together, uh, we can. Uh, your organization, your togetherness, is what gives you uh, power. And, and you need that power of togetherness. Uh, Woodrow Wilson said, if you want to make enemies, try to change something. Uh, well, all you're trying to change is years of the ingrained ethic of greed, manipulation, exploitation, the abomination of mountaintop decapitation. Of course, the mining executives, uh, the big coal's absentee Investors, the political and media apologists for big coal, insist that this abomination is all necessary because it's all about Appalachian prosperity. <laughs> I was born at night, but it wasn't last night. <laughs> prosperity? Where, where is the prosperity? Not in the coal towns. It's all up in the executive mansions, uh, in the corporate suites, and the Swiss bank accounts. They promised you a seven-course dinner and what'd you get? Possum and a six-pack, right? <laughs> so that brings us to, to where we are. Obama's in the White House, and that is a step in the right direction. But we're still in a long, hard fight against the greed heads and boneheads who always feel entitled to run roughshod over workers and small farmers, roughshod over poor folks, and now the middle class as well, roughshod over our air, our water, and our mountains. They think they're the top dogs and we're just a bunch of fire hydrants, you know, out here in the countryside. But at long last, uh, for the first time in a long time, uh, we progressives can be on the offensive. We haven't been in this position for decades. Now think about it. The last eight years, for sure, George W., uh, we had no chance for change. And honestly, under Clinton, there was no chance for change. Some of the stuff you're fighting came from the Clinton administration. Uh, from, uh, of course, Bush the First, and Ronald Reagan, and even Jimmy Carter. You really got to go back to Lyndon Johnson before there was a chance uh, for change. Uh, but now, uh, our issues are at least on the table. Mountaintop removal. You know, I, I guess you saw in the paper this morning that this is a little study uh, that they're going to do uh, that looks to me at least to, to be the possibility of an excuse to do the right thing about mountaintop removal. Uh, healthcare, uh, it's, it's on the table. Uh, green jobs, uh, labor reform, right on down the line. So what we won last fall was not just the White House and the Congress, but the opportunity for change. Uh, not the change itself, uh, not at all, but the chance for you and me to make the change. Of course, Obama's election uh, was a thrill, and I'm sure, uh, like you, uh, it, it, it was a, a great moment for America. First of all, it meant that George W. and his buddy Buckshot Cheney are gone. Yeah. <laughs> People rose up to say the emperor has no clothes, and moreover, he's buck naked and butt ugly. <laughs> so, so they're gone. But uh, second, we got ourselves a Democrat. A progressive-minded Democrat, an African-American progressive-minded Democrat, and some welcome change has already come our way. Uh, you know, they, they say that the worst job in the circus is cleaning up after the elephants. <laughs> so, so we've got, you know, Ilda Solis as the Labor Secretary. That's a huge step right there. Ken Salazar's looked to be doing a good job at Interior. Sonia Sotomayor on the Supreme Court, the Lilly Ledbetter law has already passed, and as I say, tentative steps even on mountaintop removal. So we're seeing a little bit coming our way, but we can't go all goosey about the progress. Our, our grassroots agitation and our organizational uh, activism, aggressiveness, is more essential now than ever before. We can't just crank back in the lazy boy and do 12-ounce elbow bends and say, well, Obama's in there now, he can take care of it. Now, that is not the way it works. Let's be honest, Obama is only going to be as good as we make him be. That's, right. that's the truth that's right. of it. And, and that's, that's our challenge. 